Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am Dungeon Master Bloodworth and as you can see by the graphics, today's video I will be taking a, a preview look at AD&D 2nd Edition's The Complete Book of Dwarves. So uh, really excited about digging into this a little bit uh, because um, it just so happens that my Saturday evening Shadow Dark campaign all of the player characters, uh, all three to four of them, are uh, are dwarves. So it really does play into what I'm currently doing with my uh, with my gaming at this point. And I picked this up uh, a couple of years ago, probably about two years ago or so. I'm going to switch views here. Um, and uh, really gorgeous book. Uh, first of all, I got this uh, on eBay and. This particular one is, you know, I, I'm, I'm fairly certain was never opened. Uh, I mean, it is still, you know, the binding and everything on it is still fully intact and it's it's very stiff. So I doubt that this particular one was, was opened previously. Uh, looking through it, I mean, the art is just phenomenal. I'm actually using this this inner art page as uh as the thumbnail for this as well and that's something i'm going to continue doing for the remainder of my uh ad and second edition um coverage my my series of videos for, for second edition because i'd rather have that rather than just this um this front cover which i really like these these covers as well but i, I think it's best to pull some of the art if i can uh, and use that to give you an idea of the the level and quality of the art that was still associated with uh, with TSR uh, even in its latter days once it entered into second edition. So the art is still top notch. Uh, many of the artists are still the names that you you should know uh, for fantasy uh, art in general, uh, and then more specifically to Dungeons & Dragons or gaming in general. Uh, so this also was written by Jim Bambra. Uh, it was uh, edited by Doug Stewart. Illustrations and color by Brom, Clyde Caldwell, Larry Elmore, and Keith Parkinson. Uh, illustrations in black and white were by Larry Elmore and Carl Waller. And, uh, and so really, this is... Uh, a total of about 128 pages, so so fairly thin. This is what's often called splat books by uh, by others, and sometimes that's that's meant in a derogatory means. Um, uh, I don't certainly I'm not using it for that uh, purpose, uh, but these were called splat books. And um, without further ado, I do have a really nice um, a flip through that I can go through because I don't want to bust up the binding on this too much. So I do have a really nice PDF uh, that's uh, pulled off of, actually it's not quite a PDF. It's uh, it's one of those archive flip through uh, that I can go through with you. So here we go. I am going to switch scenes here. And uh, you can see this one is like really, really good quality. So I, I like that and you can actually turn the pages by doing this instead of the arrow over there. I'm hoping that you can see this, uh, you know, very clearly. I can, um, I can increase the size. Uh, the one thing I, I, that is a little bit difficult about this is that I can't necessarily see uh, what you're seeing because I'm stuck on this uh, presentation here. But uh, as I said, this is really nice uh, presentation. I will make it a little bit larger. No, it's too large. Let's go back smaller. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna flip the pages this way now. Uh, so there's the what I use for the thumbnail, that art right there. And uh, here's a table of contents. So it's gonna go through uh, the, um, the creation of dwarves and then the so, uh, dwarf sub races than uh, your life as a dwarf and so on. I'm not gonna go through the entire booklet in, in one go here. I'm just gonna focus in on anything that really jumps out to me as well. So, um, Baylor the Hill uh, Dwarf introduces the dwarves. Um, so let's get to their, their creation, the creation of the dwarves.
Recorded by Marek Goldhammer, son of Jardak, Hammer of the Orcs. Uh, let's see who... Uh, let's see if they changed from the creation of the dwarves from uh, the Greyhawk setting to, um, to the Forgotten Realms. Uh, so I will be looking for anything that uh, indicates that. A lot of times, the, especially the earlier books too, that they still kept the same uh, deities for both uh, you know, the dwarves uh, of um, Greyhawk and the dwarves of the Forgotten Realms. Uh, this book, I believe, was put out in 1991. Yes, so this was 1991. So um, just a couple years after the launch of uh, second edition. So the creation of the worlds. Um, I, I will. I'll get to where they they talk about their deities more specifically, and we will see. Um, it it looks like uh, Marek speaks of the maker and Nanarville of the creator. Uh, dwarves in different parts of the world uh, will have contrasting views of the creation myth in far kingdoms, even contradictory views. Um, even more contradictory views. So, Celestial Lamps. So here we get to the Dwarven sub-races. So, um, yeah, I didn't see anything that jumped out right away to give, uh, you know, Dwarven gods and, and talk about them specifically here in the intro. Uh, so you have Hill Dwarves and Mountain Dwarves, and those go back all the way to you know, the earliest editions of Dungeons and Dragons. Um, so it's not until you get a little bit later on into first edition and certainly into second edition that you start seeing even more sub races. So you have deep dwarves, you have sundered dwarves. Um, so unlike most dwarves, sundered dwarves live on the surface once hill dwarf, once hill or mountain dwarves, they were cut off from their kin and traditional ways of life. Where deep dwarves went downward, sundered dwarves were forced onto the surface. All right, um, dwargar or gray dwarves. Now those go back to other mythologies and everything like that. So that is that is one of the earliest of uh, of dwarven kind spoken of. Gully Dwarves comes from Dragonlance. Then we get into Dwarf Clans and culture and everything. So clans and guilds and new clans and, and clan societies. Their loyalties, their worldview, uh, love of uh, stability. So Dwarves have a love of stability. Uh, dwarven Crafts. Uh, they've always been well known for their um, for their metalworking and stoneworking and such. Um, dwarves and humor, very interesting, uh, interesting to see. Now I'm going to be really curious to see how this translates over into uh, the other races and sub races of the other books as well. If they follow the same format, uh, that would be very interesting to see. Uh, emotions, attitudes towards other races, um, war and death, isolationism, dwarven hearths, things on dwar dwarven marriage, the life cycle of dwarves, the apprenticeships, marriageable ages, adult life, dwarven diet. So, I mean, a real, real deep dive and, and really just looking into the character classes in so much more depth than we saw in a D and D first edition or um, the D and D BXs uh, previous to that as well. So here we have breakdowns of their ability scores, minimums and maximums, and uh, ability adjustments for. Hill Dwarves versus Mountain Dwarves versus, you know, all of the other sub-races of Dwarves. Here's another phenomenal picture here. Um, so really, really cool looking stuff.
uh, proficiencies. So proficiency slots, so whether they're a warrior, a priest, a thief, a warrior priest, or a warrior thief, and then it gives them your, your, non, or your weapon proficiencies and non-weapon proficiencies. Now, to those that argue that you should not have attributes and modifiers and proficiencies and uh, mins and maximums uh, for attributes and such that, uh, as that based on um, the character race of the, uh, of the character, they, uh, you know, I don't have an issue with that. Um, I think it's kind of a silly argument to make. Uh, it's like, oh, that's bioessentialism. Um, it's it's meant to be a game mechanic, so that when you choose your sub race or race, and you're choosing your classes, and then you choose whether you're a male or a female, that all of these things are meaningful choices. So I don't have a problem with uh, you know with. Uh, having these differences in character uh, creation um, because, again, it leads to you really developing a character that is somewhat unique. And it's a, a, when a character is created with meaningful choices behind it, it's a character that you can really put that much more into it, um, you know, in your gameplay. I have a whole section here on... Um, uh, dwarven runes, even pest control, interesting modern languages of dwarves, of course. Dwarf kits, so composition of the kits, the roles, secondary skills, weapon proficiencies, bonus, non-weapon proficiencies. So this, you know, the, the idea of kits was introduced with uh, AD&D 2nd Edition. So um, we'll just continue flipping through. Ritual priest, I'm just picking up on. The ritual priest is the most common priest in Dwarven society. Warrior priest kits, so a champion. A temple guard, a vindicator. Thief kits, you have the diplomat, the entertainer, the locksmith, and pest control. Pest control to keep the stronghold free from rats, giant spiders, centipedes, carrying crawlers, kobolds, and other pests. Well, that was really, really cool. I, that's, a, that's a unique idea that I have not seen before. So that's a very interesting kit. Let's dig more into this. So there is a pest control guild. And let's see. Uh, secondary skills, they should have the secondary skill of Trapper and Furrier. Weapon proficiencies, they should carry daggers and darts, but may also use any weapon naturally permitted to thieves. Uh, bonus non-weapon uh, proficiency, animal lore and pest control. Recommended non-weapon proficiencies should be uh, alertness, blacksmith, binding, uh, blind fighting, carpenter, Direction sense, set snares, sign language, signaling, stonemasonry, and tracking, underground survival, and weaponsmithing. Equipment. Pest controllers should equip themselves with cages and other traps. If, some, um, if one has the blacksmithing or weaponsmithing uh, proficiencies, it can be assumed that he built d4 traps before starting play um distinctive appearance pest controllers wear shiny black leather armor and black leather helmets special benefits they gain plus five bonus to their move silently and find and remove traps ability uh special hindrances they have a minus 10 percent penalty to their pickpockets ability other dwarves except vermin slayers and Wayfinders consider them to be unsavory characters and react to them with a minus two penalty. Wealth options, they start with a standard 2d6 times 10 gold pieces. Uh, so really interesting stuff. 
uh, warrior thief kits. You have the ghetto fighter. Uh, you have the traitor. Uh, not traitor, but traitor. Uh, vermin slayer. So the vermin slayer is a highly skilled specialist who enters the tunnel systems of monsters like kobolds, goblins, and uh, germalanes with the intention of eradicating them. Oh, really cool. Um, as a matter of fact, my player party right now, a uh, bunch of dwarves are in a lair that is at least pockmarked with uh, some kobold tunnels and such. Uh, so, uh, so far they haven't figured out a way to get within those very, very small passageways uh, for dwarves that it's a little bit harder. Um, Role-playing and personalities. Another incredible piece of art. And we will continue flipping through. Like I said, I'm just doing a real quick thing here. So uh, equipment, you have smelters, making new weapons, uh, other common weapons that they, they tend to have. I, I noticed knee and elbow spikes. Uh, knee and elbow spikes. Uh, the glove null. This is a gauntlet constructed of iron or steel with a large spike protruding from its face. Oh, okay. All right, um, and you can see them wearing these things here on the, you know, on the, uh, on the hand here. Uh, so you can see that. The Orc Masher is not a war machine as such, but it is found in the standard part of most stronghold defenses. <laughs> Look at this thing over here on page 91. This, uh, you know, that must be the Orc Masher. Or maybe that's the grinder. Types of strongholds. You can see these. Uh, maybe that's an orc masher. That looks like a pretty scary looking vehicle. Oh, they have their horns on the front and everything. So they're blowing the horns as they're going forward. You see a dwarf back there getting ready to throw a spear and clearly either orcs or probably orcs uh, or possibly goblins running out in front of them trying to escape. Most likely orcs. So uh, designing dwarf campaigns. Standing on the head of a giant. Uh, dwarf character kit design sheet. Here you have different uh, character sheets. And then that, that, that's it. So actually went through, you know, pretty much the whole thing. Um, let's see how I get out of this. And now I can come over here and come back over to here. So there you have it, a, a preview of uh, the complete book of dwarves. Um, Really interesting stuff. Uh, I'm going to start digging into it. Uh, like I said, my my players, uh, and I'm going to alert them to take a look at this uh, book as well. They can get it for free, uh, you know, to look at it online for free, that little flip through there. And, um, and they can maybe pull some ideas uh, for their own characters out uh, from those books as well. So they could start to develop their uh, characters even more so than they have already. So um, again, thanks for joining. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, as always, remember to uh, subscribe and hit the alert button and to uh, like and comment on the videos, share the videos out there. Um, I set up every one of these that you can actually embed this video. Uh, I create my videos under Creative Commons so you can borrow from my videos and you can post them elsewhere and, uh, and, and do your commentary on them as well. I have no problem with uh, you sharing my content. Uh, you know, as long as they, you know, as long as your viewers know where it came from and um, that's, that's fine by me. So um, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thanks for joining in. I look forward to seeing you on a gaming screen 
or at a convention table sometime soon. Uh, my next scheduled convention is in January. And uh, I do have some upcoming videos. I really want you to be on the lookout for those in live streams and such. Um, I have an interview coming up on the 26th um, that I've already posted in the, uh, you know, in the, um, oh, what do they call that on, on Facebook? Uh, not Facebook, uh, YouTube, um, the community tab. So I've already announced on the community tab of a, a new convention and I will be interviewing the, uh, you know, the creator of that convention. Uh, so looking forward to that. That is going to be the Central New York RPG Convention uh, in New Haven, uh, New York. And um, really looking forward to it. That will be in June. I believe it's June 14th and 15th. Um, and so I'm definitely planning on going there. Uh, there was just... Uh, he was just featured, Roger is his first name. Roger was just featured on, um, on uh, Diversity and Dragons. And I already know of some other guests that will be going there. And some of the guys during the Diversity and Dragons stream said that they were actually really looking forward to go. So I'm, I'm really excited about it because I'll get to meet some other people that I haven't met in person yet. So that will be really cool as well. So... Uh, as always, thanks for joining. I hope you enjoyed this and uh, you all have a great rest of your day.